On March 8th, Anthony Joshua will be facing Francis Ngannou in a super fight, and pros have put in their predictions for the fight. Deontay Wilder has broken his silence since his loss to Joseph Parker, and he stated, Fun fight. I look at it as a fun fight. May the best man win. Virgil Hunter sat down to analyze the fight, and he definitely sees Francis Ngannou as a huge threat for Anthony. Virgil stated, The Joshua that showed up to the last fight looked very good. He looked very very sound, explosive, and fast. I do know that Nganu is a physical specimen and he is cut from a different cloth. The way he's come up and how he's built, he's been physically strong since he was a youth. I expect Joshua to win, but it is a dangerous fight. As long as he's on his two feet, as long as he can punch, he is always a danger. Dewey Cooper really believes that Francis is going to shock the world for a second time when he faces Anthony, and Dewey stated, Tyson Fury was yelling at Francis Ngannou too. We were very much prepared for this fight. We worked hard. Francis came up in the same mind as Cameroonian. We put the same work ethic into our training camp. We worked so hard that if you don't work hard at the level, you will not be successful. Francis is working extremely hard for this fight and come March 8th, it will all show. Anthony Joshua, an Olympic gold medalist, won three fights in 2023. On the upswing in his career right now and that is even even good for the fight in Saudi Arabia. Francis, also a former UFC heavyweight champion, stepped into the ring against Tyson Fury in his first boxing fight and took him to the canvas, but the two judges voted against Francis. Fighting against Anthony Joshua, a former heavyweight champion, does not matter to Francis Ngannou. He is the best fighter in the world and is going to show the world again on March 8th. Barry Jones talked about what a win would mean for Anthony Joshua, and he he sees big changes coming for both fighters. If, you, if Fury beats Usyk in any shape or form, then he goes in the favourite regardless, mm. I think. And he should go in the favours. Because over the last few years, he's clearly been the better fighter. That's the truth of it. But um, if you're only as, I've said this, you're there, it's been a bit pedantic, but if you're only as good as your last fight, who is the best heavyweight in the world? Mm. In general, who is? Do you say, you'd have, maybe you say Joshua? because he, he's had maybe the best performance, or would you say Joseph Parker? Because maybe he had the best performance. You know, but then you wouldn't have put him in front, in front of either of those guys, the top four or five anyway, Parker. And all of a sudden, he's in, he's in the offering. Or Dan Duval had a really good performance against against Gerald Miller, but was, how good is Gerald Miller? It's that, so you have to judge the fight on his best versus his best. Fury might be on the slide. Last that performance was against Wilder, Wilder in, in Wilder 2, which was in February 2000. So that's a long time before you've seen your peak. The other wins he's had since then, Dillian White was on the slide, clearly. Chisora was what it was. You know, and so, you know, it's, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, not a, there's a lot you can take to give Joshua an opportunity. But then up until Joshua versus Wallin, and even the few, even the few you underperformed against Ngannou, you still thought Fury would do a job on, on Joshua because he lacked confidence. Now he's full of confidence. That's only one fight. So you can't judge someone on one fight because otherwise we're saying that is a world-class fighter. And are we, are we saying that? I don't know if we are. We, may, we, we sort of are, but with an asterisk, of it's, we're not quite sure how good he is because we've only seen him against the heavy champion of the world who underperformed. But did he make him underperform? And then, the, you know, you can just... You can just you can spit the narrative whatever you, whatever you want to, but in reality is, no, you have to judge a fight on his very best. Eddie Hearn loves the fight, but he thinks that there's just too much at stake for Anthony Joshua in this fight. Eddie stated, It's definitely a fight with a lot of jeopardy. You really have to be on your guard for this fight. You've got to be razor sharp. Francis has surprised everybody. He's one stubborn competitor and it's not going to be easy. You'll have to knock him down and keep banging and banging and banging away. This isn't going to be one hit on the chin. Clearly, he's an immovable object with a fantastic chin and big, big, big power. You've got to be really smart in this fight. Don't get hit, break him down, and hopefully he'll go over like a big tower and we can just move on. When Tyson Fury was asked about retirement and who he would want to fight next, both Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou were on his list no matter who wins. I keep hearing talk of people saying that I should retire or I'm going to retire soon or whatever. I ain't retiring anywhere. I've got two fights with Usyk for the Undisputed twice. 
Then I'm going to fight AJ at least once, maybe twice, if there's a rematch, if he wants one, after the first battering of him. And then I'm going to fight Ngannou again. And that's just a start. So there's five little fights for you to uh, whet your appetite with. I ain't going nowhere. Nowhere. 35 year old in the prime of my life. Dan Hardy actually likes Francis' chances against a fighter like Anthony Joshua, and he stated, This is the benefit in AJ going second. There isn't a surprise factor around Nganu. Of course, you have to expect him to have made improvements, but the big surprise was how he was going to look the first time. AJ knows that now. The other thing as well, AJ is not going to show up halfway through a training camp not fully prepared. I thought Tyson was going to do the last one, and I still feel like Nganu won that fight. I feel like it's a much more winnable fight for Nganu, and I'm going to back him in this one. Even Ricky Hatton believes that Francis could very well knock Anthony Joshua out if he plays his cards right. Ricky stated, AJ is a very good boxer and is known for his explosiveness and his power, but you don't become an Olympic gold medalist and a two-time heavyweight champion of the world without the ability that Joshua has. But on the downside, he can be hurt, knocked down, and stopped, and when you think of the size and punching power Nganu has got, there's every chance he could knock AJ out, but the bigger picture is Joshua is a very rounded, accomplished boxer. He's very skillful and heavy-handed, and it's the right time for him because his confidence is sky-high from the past couple of performances. If he goes out there and impresses where Tyson didn't, it'll work more in his favor when they sit down on the negotiation table and try to make the Tyson Fury fight. Carl Frotch and George Grove sat down to talk about the fight, and they see it being a rather even fight depending on how the fighters prepare. Got to win comfortably. Um... Yeah. It makes sense. What points? Do you think he'll stop him? Well, I don't know about that in Ghana. I don't know how, how good a chin he's got. He looks rock solid and he looks like quite a good athlete. He went in the 10 rounds with Fury. Tough, um, And the 10 rounds, I thought he was going to gas. I thought he was definitely going to gas after a couple of rounds. Big dude, never boxed this distance before. But whether he got the second wind when he drops Fury and that got him through, we might not see that this time round. What I don't want to see is like a, a cautious Joshua who just sort of tries to sort of no, fit fiddle his way to a decision because there's a lot on the line. Well, and Garner might not allow that and Garner might end up having to press him because I think AJ could probably outbox him quite easily behind his behind his jab and move and bring him on. But if Ngannou gets a bit frustrated, he might roll inside and start doing them. He did a little flying punch, didn't he? Like an MMA punch. Oh, did he? The last one that, that I think just whizzed past the chin of Fury. So he might use his size and strength and back AJ up, put him under pressure, which would then force AJ to throw punches and fight back and meet him as he comes. Um, if he's taking advice correctly out of the corner, he should stand and stand his ground and meet and go on. So it could be a good fight. I expect him to- Lennox Lewis doesn't blame Francis, but he's not happy with the state of the heavyweight division anymore. Lennox stated, hats off to Nganu for making the most of his opportunities. He's done nothing wrong. This is just the heavyweight division in the year 2024. In my opinion, this fight adds zero credibility to AJ's resume. He's supposed to win this fight, and when he does, what does he gain or learn by beating Nganu in his second heavyweight fight? If he loses, then it's an absolute disaster. The same stood for Fury, and it almost cost him everything. Pauli Malignaggi really doesn't think that Francis can win, but he is happy with the amount of respect that Francis is giving the sport in the way that he's been preparing. I expect Joshua to uh, dominate this fight. I expect Nganu to, you know, give it the effort, come fully prepared. I respect Wingano a ton for giving the sport the respect it deserves as far as preparing adequately. He's got some good trainers in Dewey Cooper and, and Eric Nitzik. Uh, they did a great job with him. I'm, I have no doubt they'll have him uh, fundamentally uh, prepared once again uh, to the fullest. Uh, I think it was, you know, what he did was, was it, got, it, get, it created more interest in these crossover fights. But I think the, the train stops here. I think Joshua jumping on this was not a surprise, by the way. I felt like this was a fight that uh, could be, could easily be made. Because you look at Joshua's kind of a tentative chin, and you, and you give Ngannou sort of that puncher's chance. But I really feel Joshua's at his most confident. He's been the guy who's been active the past year. And I think that's why he's going to come in 
full of full fully with his momentum and do a job on on Ngannou. John Fury sent Anthony Joshua a warning about facing someone like Francis Ngannou, and he stated, "Ngannou is a big, strong fella. He's muscly, but he can also move. He's athletic, and if you're there, he'll take the top of your head straight off. And don't forget, he's a lot more powerful a man than Andy Ruiz Jr. When he gets you in trouble, you'll know about it, and he won't just do that with AJ. He'll do it to anybody out there. Daniel Cormier definitely believes that Francis Ngannou will come away with the win in this one, and he stated, Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou is going to be a fun fight only happening, though. Because of the way Ngannou competed against Tyson Fury, who is going to be better than he was when he fought the lineal heavyweight champion in his first professional fight. I believe it's going to be a better, more manageable fight for Francis Ngannou because of the way Anthony Joshua approaches fights. Anthony Joshua does not want to get knocked out. If you asked me this six months ago, I'd have said no chance. You ask me today, I think Francis has a chance and I think Francis is going to get it done. Jeff Mayweather definitely thinks that Anthony has a good chance of winning whether he's preparing properly or not. I think even if he takes him extra serious, I think that he kind of still has a chance. I mean, the one thing that he got is the one thing that everybody wished they had, and that's power. And I think that at some point in the fight, you know, he's going to get he's gonna get caught by Ghana and he's going to have to show his worth. We'll give, you know, more people hope and you know and now you had and, and belief and belief in himself but um of course being that you know we now come straight from ufc to, to boxing and it's putting in, and putting in this high position i mean a lot of people don't like it but the thing is this is that just like when they start youtube boxing nobody liked it but now it's okay it's accepted so, nothing wrong with Francis and Ghana um, opening the door for other guys that, you know, that probably don't have as much experience as these other fighters and, and, and does well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of our other videos on the screen right now.